Okay, I think uh, we're gonna I'm gonna pass the baton back to Ida, and uh, we'll discuss the last model, and then we'll have a collective discussion, continuing the collective discussion we've already started. Great. So we have Lynn Hudson uh, from the CPATH Institute telling us about a closed partnership consortium model. Oh, sorry. And I want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present on the closed consortium model from the perspective of the Critical Path Institute. I should point out that while most of our databases at CPATH and our seven consortia do have closed access, we have also a large database, an Alzheimer's database, in the model of the controlled access to pool data. And that database has been used by over 250 qualified researchers. So for disclosures, a third of our funding comes from foundations and disease societies. The Gates Foundation funds our TB consortium. The National MS Society funds our multiple sclerosis uh, consortium. The Polycystic Kidney Disease Foundation funds our PKD consortium. A third of our funding comes from government grants including the FDA and the Science Foundation of Arizona, which is where we're based. And a third comes from industry fees from our 41 different companies. And not shown on this collaborator slide is the hundreds of academic investigators that participate in our consortia. So we have over 1,000 uh, researchers around the globe that participate in our different consortia. I have no financial conflicts of interest to disclose, but I do admit to being partial to the NIH since that's where I spent most of my career. So each of our seven consortia work on developing what the FDA terms drug development tools, and these tools are listed here. Sharing data is integral to every single project that we do to create a new drug development tool. And these tools can come into play at every step of the drug pipeline, which is shown on the lower end. So each consortium starts by defining a research goal, identifying the data needed to accomplish that goal, applying data standards to enable the integration of all the data, pooling the data, and then finally working with the FDA to first develop the best statistical analysis, analysis plan to look at that data and then executing on the statistical analysis plan. So as far as benefits, the first two bullets here are essentially saying that two heads are better than one. And in the same philosophy, two heads are faster than one. So what we are doing is de-risking the regulatory process. Once FDA qualifies a biomarker or a clinical outcome assessment for a specific context of use, any sponsor can count on using that drug development tool without the FDA reviewers requiring additional information on the validity of that tool. So the benefit for both the EMA and the FDA is a saving of time and effort, and together with the assurance that their qualification tool is of the highest quality. So other benefits, the members can gain mutual access to additional data sources for their own development programs, and that depends on the specific data access agreements that are worked out for each database. The restricted access to data reduces the liability risks. The restricted access to data also reduces the risks of disclosure of proprietary information. The data can be of higher quality because both the data and the methods are subjected to rigorous curation and standardization prior to pooling. And the fruits of the data sharing, which are the qualified drug development tools, are freely available. So there's no IP to fight over. 
If there is any other IP generated through the consortia research, that IP belongs to the consortia itself. Risks, the levels of evidence or data required to qualify a new drug development tool are typically greater than those needed by a sponsor for an individual drug submission, which can add to the cost and time. Companies and or academics may not be willing to share all the pertinent trials, which may alter the conclusions or necessitate additional prospective trials, and data may not be sufficiently masked, leading to disclosure of proprietary information, and finally, new analyses of existing data may reveal unanticipated either safety or efficacy issues. And for my last slide, the challenges. So there are concerns about equity, as some members may share lots of data, others minimal amounts. We always have contributors and some lurkers in our consortia. The respect for confidentiality in IP, the contributors have options through the data sharing agreement for the data that they provide. The patient privacy and informed consent are issues that face all the models, and I just put it up there to indicate that, uh, to reinforce that even though it's a closed system, there are still those challenges to think about. The data sharing and pooling mechanisms, we need interoperability, we need agreement on which standard to use. That's being made easier now that EMA is starting to require the CDIS data standard in, in this year, and the FDA uh, will uh, follow by recommending a standard by 2017. Risk mitigation, we have pretty extensive membership agreements that lay out our code of conduct. Cultural resistance is the same for all four models. The effective communication of the value proposition is something that we've been working on developing use cases for each of our companies. Incentives, we really want people to move to the situation where they can't accomplish what they need or want to do without sharing data. And finally, the funding sources are an issue for all the models and the curation, the standardization, the pooling and maintaining the legacy data is a resource intense activity. And I don't mean to suggest that by standardizing, I just mean having everything using a common data standard. We found as we try to pool different studies that every company may carry out an individual measure in their own particular way, and it really requires a pool of experts to sort of figure out what's the definition that was used of relapse rates or whatever and how the tests were actually applied. So um, I should stop there by just saying that we think those challenges can be overcome with our collaboration, diligence, and focus, and that's what we're working on.